rotation really to I really don't want the rotation to interpolate that quickly so I'm going to change these into Bezier curves so that it cut, the rotation doesn't really start until about here and then rotates out. So if we change this to keyframe interpolation, change linear to continuous Bezier, it'll make it feel a little bit more natural. So that bounce feels really nice. Let's also add some rotation to the ball. Now if we added rotation to the ball now, it would actually interrupt our animation that we already have in rotation. So what we want to do is pre-compose this and create a new symbol or comp to give us an added level of rotation. So if we highlight the element, go to layers, go to pre-compose, leave attributes outside. It'll leave all our keyframes out here in our external timeline. Let's call this ball. Hit OK. If I hit U, which shows you any keyframes on a layer, it will show you that those animation keyframes are still on the outside. Now let's double click into the ball and set some more rotation. So if you hold down Option and double click, it brings you into the ball element. Now an easy way to show all the attributes of this layer is to type the word parts. So let's type P for position, hold down the Shift key while typing the rest, A, R, T, S, and that will show you all your attributes. Let's set some keyframes by clicking the stopwatches. And let's drag these to the beginning of the timeline. And let's figure out how long our project is here. So the last keyframe is at frame 18. Let's click back into the ball. And let's give it some rotation. I'd say let's do negative two rotations. You can do per degree, per rotation, or both. So you can type in negative 180. So it goes two and a half times around. As you can see here, the ball is now rotating. And this will give you an added level of animation that would make it a little bit more natural, a little bit more real looking. Okay. Let's go back into the ball and just lower it a little bit because we're not quite seeing the rotation we want. So let's make it just one rotation, negative one. And click back out into our main comp and let's see how that looks by hitting zero on the number pad. Looks pretty good. Now you can leave it at this level of animation. You don't have to put any effects on it if you don't want to. Um, you could also add some blur if you'd like. You can do that through effects, but since these are linear keyframes and some Bezier keyframes and the computer's in between them, you can actually click here, which gives you your motion blur, as you can see, and click here to actually set the motion blur on. It'll give you a little bit added level of reality to your animation. Okay, now that we have our animation done, we can set some effects to it. Let's go down to, I don't know, let's try color correction. And let's try hue saturation. I'm just going to add this effect on here just to show you how to set keyframes for an effect. As you can see here, the effects attribute has popped up. If we turn down our arrow and turn down our arrow for hue saturation, you can see that there's no keyframe set at all yet. As you can see up here on our top left, you can see an effects window pop up, which overtakes our project window, but our project window is still there behind there. So you can click back and forth on the tabs. Now let's change the color of this animation. Let's go back to our first frame, click our stopwatch there, or you can click it down here on the timeline. As you see, it has set a keyframe here. Let's scroll to our end, and let's play around with the color by just clicking and dragging here. And as you can see, the ball changes color through time. These effect keyframes behave just like regular keyframes. You can have them tween between each other. You can have them uh, easy ease between each other. Now, if you wanted to publish this animation, you would go to Composition, Make Movie, this brings up our render queue or your publishing window. This is where you would set your render settings for your final movie. 
if we click render settings and we want this to be full size best quality usually you don't need to touch these unless you're doing something specific with proxies which in this case we were not we're not going to deal with interlaced frame blending or anything here uh, we want to make sure that our we want to check the frame rate make sure it's the same as our project which it is hit OK now we want to click on our output module and make sure we set QuickTime Movie. We can change the export of the style of movie, the codec. So I'm going to put animation, millions of colors. If we wanted to do this with an alpha channel, we would choose millions of colors plus. Hit OK. Since we have no audio, you can leave this on, you can turn it off. Hit OK. And let's export this render. Let's go to desktop. And let's say, call this B ball animation. Save it to a folder or onto your desktop. And you are set. Click render. The render's done, and we can take a look at our final product. If we go to our desktop. And now we can watch our ball animation movie. Well, thank you very much for joining me for Slippery Rock NYC's animation podcast using After Effects and Flash. My name is Rob Powers, and I hope to see you soon. Please check out our following podcasts on how to use After Effects as a character animation tool, and hope to see you back soon.